Bioplastics are plastics derived from renewable biomass sources, such as vegetable fats and oils, corn starch, straw, wood chips, food waste, etc. Bioplastic can be made from agricultural by-products and also from used plastic bottles and other containers using microorganisms. Common plastics, such as fossil fuel plastics also called petro-based polymers are derived from petroleum or natural gas. Not all bioplastics are biodegradable nor biodegrade more readily than commodity fossil fuel-derived plastics. Bioplastics are usually derived from sugar derivatives, including starch, cellulose, and lactic acid. As of 2014, bioplastics represented approximately 0.2% of the global polymer market, 300 million tons. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Applications. Bioplastics are used for disposable items such as packaging, crockery, cutlery, pots, bowls, and straws. Few commercial applications exist for bioplastics. In principle they could replace many applications for petroleum-derived plastics, however cost and performance remain problematic. As a matter of fact, their usage is favorable only if supported by specific regulations limiting the usage of conventional plastics. Typical is the example of Italy, where biodegradable plastic bags and shoppers are compulsory since 2011 with the introduction of a specific law. Beyond structural materials, electroactive bioplastics are being developed that promise to be used to carry electric current. Biopolymers are available as coatings for paper rather than the more common petrochemical coatings. Topic Types Topic Starch based plastics Thermoplastic starch currently represents the most widely used bioplastic, constituting about fifty per cent of the bioplastics market. Simple starch bioplastic can be made at home. Pure starch is able to absorb humidity, and is thus a suitable material for the production of drug capsules by the pharmaceutical sector. Flexibilizer and plasticizer such as sorbitol and glycerin can also be added so the starch can also be processed thermoplastically. The characteristics of the resulting bioplastic also called thermoplastical starch can be tailored to specific needs by adjusting the amounts of these additives. Starch-based bioplastics are often blended with biodegradable polyesters to produce starch, polylactic acid, starch, polycaprolactone or starch, ecoflex polybutylene adipate co produced by BASF, blends. These blends are used for industrial applications and are also compostable. Other producers, such as Roquette, have developed other starch, polyolefin blends. These blends are not biodegradable, but have a lower carbon footprint than petroleum-based plastics used for the same applications. Due to the origin of its raw material, starch is cheap, abundant, and renewable. Starch-based plastics are complex blends of starch with compostable plastics such as polylactic acid, polybutylene adipate terephthalate, polybutylene succinate, polycaprolactone, and polyhydroxyalkanoates. These complex blends improve water resistance as well as processing and mechanical properties. Starch-based films, mostly used for packaging purposes, are made mainly from starch blended with thermoplastic polyesters to form biodegradable and compostable products. These films are seen specifically in consumer goods packaging of magazine wrappings and bubble films. In food packaging, these films are seen as bakery or fruit and vegetable bags. Composting bags with this films are used in selective collecting of organic waste. Further, a new starch based film was developed by Agricultural Research Service scientists can even be used as a paper. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Cellulose based plastics. 
Cellulose bioplastics are mainly the cellulose esters, including cellulose acetate and nitrocellulose, and their derivatives, including celluloid. Cellulose can become thermoplastic when extensively modified. An example of this is cellulose acetate, which is expensive and therefore rarely used for packaging. However, cellulosic fibers added to starches can improve mechanical properties, permeability to gas, and water resistance due to being less hydrophilic than starch. A group at Shanghai University was able to construct a novel green plastic based on cellulose through a method called hot pressing. Topic: <laughs> Protein-based plastics. Bioplastics can be made from proteins from different sources. For example, wheat gluten and casein show promising properties as a raw material for different biodegradable polymers. Additionally, soy protein is being considered as another source of bioplastic. Soy proteins have been used in plastic production for over 100 years. For example, body panels of an original Ford automobile were made of soy based plastic. There are difficulties with using soy protein based plastics due to their water sensitivity and relatively high cost. Therefore, producing blends of soy protein with some already available biodegradable polyesters improves the water sensitivity and cost. Some aliphatic polyesters The aliphatic biopolyesters are mainly polyhydroxyalkanoates PHAs like the poly-3-hydroxybutyrate PHB, polyhydroxyvalerate PHV, and polyhydroxyhexanoate PHH. Polylactic acid PLA. Polylactic acid PLA is a transparent plastic produced from corn or dextrose. Superficially, it is similar to conventional petrochemical-based mass plastics like PS, it has the distinct advantage of degrading to non-toxic products. Unfortunately it exhibits inferior impact strength, thermal robustness, and barrier properties blocking air transport across the membrane. PLA and PLA blends generally come in the form of granulates with various properties, and are used in the plastic processing industry for the production of films, fibers, plastic containers, cups and bottles. PLA is also the most common type of plastic filament used for home-fused deposition modeling. Poly-3-hydroxybutyrate. The biopolymer poly-3-hydroxybutyrate is a polyester produced by certain bacteria processing glucose, corn starch or wastewater. Its characteristics are similar to those of the petroplastic polypropylene. PHB production is increasing. The South American sugar industry, for example, has decided to expand PHB production to an industrial scale. PHB is distinguished primarily by its physical characteristics. It can be processed into a transparent film with a melting point higher than 130 degrees Celsius, and is biodegradable without residue. <laughs> Polyhydroxyalkanoates Polyhydroxyalkanoates are linear polyesters produced in nature by bacterial fermentation of sugar or lipids. They are produced by the bacteria to store carbon and energy. In industrial production, the polyester is extracted and purified from the bacteria by optimizing the conditions for the fermentation of sugar. More than 150 different monomers can be combined within this family to give materials with extremely different properties. PHA is more ductile and less elastic than other plastics, and it is also biodegradable. These plastics are being widely used in the medical industry. Topic: <inaudible> Polyamide 11 
PA11 is a biopolymer derived from natural oil. It is also known under the tradename Rilson B, commercialized by Arkema. PA11 belongs to the technical polymers family and is not biodegradable. Its properties are similar to those of PA12, although emissions of greenhouse gases and consumption of non-renewable resources are reduced during its production. Its thermal resistance is also superior to that of PA12. It is used in high-performance applications like automotive fuel lines, pneumatic airbrake tubing, electrical cable antitermite sheathing, flexible oil and gas pipes, control fluid umbilicals, sports shoes, electronic device components, and catheters. A similar plastic is polyamide 410 PA410, derived 70% from castor oil, under the trade name Ecopax, commercialized by DSM. PA410 is a high-performance polyamide that combines the benefits of a high melting point approximately 250 degrees Celsius, low moisture absorption and excellent resistance to various chemical substances. Topic: Bio-derived polyethylene. The basic building block monomer of polyethylene is ethylene. Ethylene is chemically similar to and can be derived from ethanol, which can be produced by fermentation of agricultural feedstocks such as sugar cane or corn. Bio-derived polyethylene is chemically and physically identical to traditional polyethylene, it does not biodegrade but can be recycled. The Brazilian chemicals group Brascom claims that using its method of producing polyethylene from sugar cane ethanol captures removes from the environment 2.15 tons of CO2 per ton of green polyethylene produced. Topic. Genetically modified bioplastics Genetic modification GM, is also a challenge for the bioplastics industry. None of the currently available bioplastics, which can be considered first-generation products, require the use of GM crops, although GM corn is the standard feedstock. Looking further ahead, some of the second-generation bioplastics manufacturing technologies under development employ the plant factory model, using genetically modified crops or genetically modified bacteria to optimize efficiency. <laughs> Polyhydroxyurethanes Recently, there have been a large emphasis on producing biobased and isocyanate-free polyurethanes. One such example utilizes a spontaneous reaction between polyamines and cyclic carbonates to produce polyhydroxyurethanes. Unlike traditional cross-linked polyurethanes, cross-linked polyhydroxyurethanes have been shown to be capable of recycling and reprocessing through dynamic transcarbamylation reactions. Lipid-derived polymers A number of bioplastic classes have been synthesized from plant and animal-derived fats and oils. Polyurethanes, polyesters, epoxy resins and a number of other types of polymers have been developed with comparable properties to crude oil-based materials. The recent development of olefin metathesis has opened a wide variety of feedstocks to economical conversion into biomonomers and polymers. With the growing production of traditional vegetable oils as well as low-cost microalgae-derived oils, there is huge potential for growth in this area. Topic: <laughs> Environmental impact Materials such as starch, cellulose, wood, sugar and biomass are used as a substitute for fossil fuel resources to produce bioplastics, this makes the production of bioplastics a more sustainable activity compared to conventional plastic production. 
The environmental impact of bioplastics is often debated, as there are many different metrics for greenness, e.g., water use, energy use, deforestation, biodegradation, etc. Hence bioplastic environmental impacts are categorized into nonrenewable energy use, climate change, eutrophication and acidification. Bioplastic production significantly reduces greenhouse gas emissions and decreases non-renewable energy consumption. Firms worldwide would also be able to increase the environmental sustainability of their products by using bioplastics although bioplastics save more non-renewable energy than conventional plastics and emit less GHG compared to conventional plastics. Bioplastics also have negative environmental impacts such as eutrophication and acidification. Bioplastics induce higher eutrophication potentials than conventional plastics. Biomass production during industrial farming practices causes nitrate and phosphate to filtrate into water bodies, this causes eutrophication which is the richness of the nutrients in body waters. Eutrophication is a threat to water resources around the world since it kills aquatic organisms, creates dead zones and causes harmful algal blooms. Bioplastics also increase acidification. The high increase in eutrophication and acidification caused by bioplastics is also caused by using chemical fertilizer in the cultivation of renewable raw materials to produce bioplastics. Other environmental impacts of bioplastics include exerting lower human and terrestrial ecotoxicity and carcinogenic potentials compared to conventional plastics. However, bioplastics exert higher aquatic ecotoxicity than conventional materials. Bioplastics and other bio-based materials increase stratospheric ozone depletion compared to conventional plastics, this is a result of nitrous oxide emissions during fertilizer application during industrial farming for biomass production. Artificial fertilizer increase nitrous oxide emissions especially when the crop does not need all the nitrogen. Minor environmental impacts of bioplastics include toxicity through using pesticides on the crops used to make bioplastics. Bioplastics also cause carbon dioxide emissions from harvesting vehicles. Other minor environmental impacts include high water consumption for biomass cultivation, soil erosion, soil carbon losses and loss of biodiversity, and they are mainly are a result of land use associated with bioplastics. Land use for bioplastics production leads to lost carbon sequestration and increases the carbon costs while diverting land from its existing uses although bioplastics are extremely advantageous because they reduce non-renewable consumption and GHG emissions, they also negatively affect the environment through land and water consumption, using pesticide and fertilizer, eutrophication and acidification, hence one's preference for either bioplastics or conventional conventional plastics depends on what one considers the most important environmental impact. Biodegradation of bioplastics Biodegradation of any plastic is a process that happens at solid, liquid interface whereby the enzymes in the liquid phase depolymerize the solid phase both bioplastics and conventional plastics containing additives are able to biodegrade. Bioplastics are able to biodegrade in different environments hence they are more acceptable than conventional plastics. Biodegradability of bioplastics occurs under various environmental conditions including soil, aquatic environments and compost. Both the structure and composition of biopolymer or biocomposite have an effect on the biodegradation process, hence changing the composition and structure might increase biodegradability. Soil and compost as environment conditions are more efficient in biodegradation due to their high microbial diversity. Composting not only biodegrades bioplastics efficiently but it also significantly reduces the emission of greenhouse gases. Biodegradability of bioplastics in compost environments can be upgraded by adding more soluble sugar and increasing temperature. 
Soil environments on the other hand have high diversity of microorganisms making it easier for biodegradation of bioplastics to occur. However, bioplastics in soil environments need higher temperatures and a longer time to biodegrade. Some bioplastics biodegrade more efficiently in water bodies and marine systems, however, this causes danger to marine ecosystems and freshwater. Hence it is accurate to conclude that biodegradation of bioplastics in water bodies which leads to the death of aquatic organisms and unhealthy water can be noted as one of the negative environmental impacts of bioplastics. <laughs> Industry and markets While plastics based on organic materials were manufactured by chemical companies throughout the 20th century, the first company solely focused on bioplastics Marlboro Biopolymers was founded in 1983. However, Marlboro and other ventures that followed failed to find commercial success, with the first such company to secure long-term financial success being the Italian company Novamont, founded in 1989. The expense and time requirements of researching and testing new bio-based and biodegradable polymers have placed bioplastics at a commercial disadvantage compared to petrochemical-based plastics. Bioplastics remain less than 1% of all plastics manufactured worldwide, and until very recently have been an average of two to four times more expensive to manufacture than petrochemical plastics. Most bioplastics do not yet save more carbon emissions than are required to manufacture them. In addition to the cost of research, bioplastics lack the versatility of application that petrochemical plastics possess, with many conventional plastics having no bio-based equivalent that can match their quality. Finally, the industry faces logistical problems with both material sources and waste disposal infrastructure. As most bioplastics are produced from plant sugars, starches, or oils, it is estimated that replacing 250 million tons of the plastic manufactured each year with bio-based plastics would require 100 million hectares of land, or 7% of the arable land on Earth. And when bioplastics reach the end of their life cycle, those designed to be compostable and marketed as biodegradable are often sent to landfills due to the lack of proper composting facilities or waste sorting, where they then release methane as they break down anaerobically. Despite this, the bioplastics industry has grown by 20-30% a year. BCC research forecast that the global market for biodegradable polymers would grow at a compound average growth rate of more than 17% through 2012, and this rate of growth has actually been exceeded. Bio-based plastics are predicted to make up 5% of all manufactured plastics in 2020, and 40% of all manufactured plastics in 2030. Sarasana predicts that when bioplastics reach 5% of the plastics market in 2020, the market for bio-based plastics will be worth $5.8 billion, three times the size of the bioplastics market in 2014. The largest demand for bioplastics has been in packaging, driven by widespread concern over the use of petrochemical plastics in disposable, one-use products that are then sequestered in landfills or the natural environment. Packaging continues to provide 60% of the market for bioplastic, and to account for the largest share of growth in the industry. There has been a shift in the market for an increased demand of bioplastics, especially for sustainable packaging. This has been seen specifically in Western Europe, which accounted for more than 45% of the global biodegradable plastics demand in 2014. This demand from consumers for more sustainable options was also seen in recent policies. Italy has banned the use of petroleum based plastic bags, and there is a tax on use of petroleum based plastic bags in Germany. However, the industry in biobased polymers has not grown as rapidly as some have predicted. 
The NNFCC predicted that the industry would exceed 2.1 million tons produced each year by 2013, but by in 2017, only 2.05 million tons of bioplastic were produced in that year. This remains only a small fraction of all plastics manufacturing, which produced a total 292 million tons of thermoplastics in 2015. As production expands, there remain no universal standards governing bioplastics and their manufacture or disposal. This includes a lack of any regulation on the amount of sustainably sourced material in a product required for it to be marketed as a bioplastic. It should also be noted that, according to Market & Market, the global biodegradable plastics market is just beginning and only accounts for less than 1% of the overall plastics market. Because of the fragmentation in the market and ambiguous definitions it is difficult to describe the total market size for bioplastics, but estimates put global production capacity at 327,000 tons. In contrast, global production of polyethylene PE and polypropylene PP, the world's leading petrochemical-derived polyolefins, was estimated at over 150 million tons in 2015. COPA Committee of Agricultural Organization in the European Union and COGEGA General Committee for the Agricultural Cooperation in the European Union have made an assessment of the potential of bioplastics in different sectors of the European economy. Catering products, 450,000 tons per year Organic waste bags, 100,000 tons per year Biodegradable mulch foils, 130,000 tons per year Biodegradable foils for diapers 80,000 tons per year Diapers, 100% biodegradable, 240,000 tons per year Foil packaging, 400,000 tons per year Vegetable packaging, 400,000 tons per year Tire components, 200,000 tons per year Total, 2 million tons per year. History and development of bioplastics 1862, at the Great London Exhibition, Alexander Parkinzine displays Parkinizine, the first plastic. Parkinzine is made from nitrocellulose, white 1998. 1897, still produced today, Galilith is a milk-based bioplastic that was created by German chemists in 1897. Galilith is primarily found in buttons, Thielen 2014. 1907, Leo Bakelin invented Bakelite, which received the National Historic Chemical Landmark for its non-conductivity and heat-resistant properties. It is used in radio and telephone casings, kitchenware, firearms and many more products, Potic, Sneha, Matthew 2014. 1912, Brandenburger invents cellophane out of wood, cotton, or hemp cellulose, Thielen 2014. 1920s, Wallace Carruthers finds polylactic acid PLA plastic. PLA is incredibly expensive to produce and is not mass produced until 1989. White Clouds 2018. 1926, Maurice Lemoyne invents polyhydroxybutyrate (PHB), which is the first bioplastic made from bacteria. Thielen 2014. 1930s, the first bioplastic car was made from soy beans by Henry Ford. Thielen 2014. 1940–1945, during World War II, an increase in plastic production is seen as it is used in many wartime materials. Due to government funding and oversight the United States production of plastics in general, not just bioplastics tripled during 1940–1945 Rogers 2005. 1950s, amylomize greater than 50% amylose content corn was successfully bred and commercial bioplastics applications started to be explored. Lu, Molt, Long, 2009 A decline in bioplastic development is seen due to the cheap oil prices, however the development of synthetic plastics continues. 
1970s, the environmental movement spurred more development in bioplastics. Rogers, 2005. 1983, the first bioplastics company, Marlboro Biopolymers, is started, which uses a bacteria based bioplastic called Biopal. Fetter, 1985. 1989, the further development of PLA is made by Dr. Patrick R. Gruber when he figures out how to create PLA from corn, White Clouds 2018. The leading bioplastic company is created called Novamount. Novamount uses matter by, a bioplastic, in multiple different applications. Novamount 2018 1992, it is reported in science that PHB can be produced by the plant Arabidopsis thaliana, Poirier, Dennis, Klimperens, Narath, Somerville 1992. Late 1990s, the development of TP starch and bioplast from research and production of the company Biotech lead to the Bioflex film. Bioflex film can be classified as blown film extrusion, flat film extrusion, and injection molding lines. These three classifications have applications as follows, blown films, sacks, bags, trash bags, mulch foils, hygiene products, diaper films, air bubble films, protective clothing, gloves, double rib bags, labels, barrier ribbons, flat films, trays, flower pots, freezer products and packaging, cups, pharmaceutical packaging, injection molding, disposable cutlery, cans, containers, performed pieces, CD trays. Days, cemetery articles, golf tees, toys, writing materials, Lorx 1998 2001, Metabolics Inc. purchases Monsanto's Biopol business originally Zeneca which uses plants to produce bioplastics, Barber & Fisher 2001 2001, Nick Tucker uses elephant grass as a bioplastic base to make plastic car parts, Tucker 2001 2005, Cargill and Dow Chemicals is rebranded as NatureWorks and becomes the leading PLA producer, Penny C. 2016 2007, Metabolics Inc. Market tests its first 100% biodegradable plastic called Mural, made from corn sugar fermentation and genetically engineered bacteria. DiGregorio 2009 2012, a bioplastic is developed from seaweed proving to be one of the most environmentally friendly bioplastics based on research published in the Journal of Pharmacy Research, Rajendran, Papala, Sneha, Angelina, Rajam 2012 2013, a patent is put on bioplastic derived from blood and a cross-linking agent like sugars, proteins, etc. Iridoid derivatives, diamidates, diones, carbodiamides, acrylamides, dimethylsubarimidates, aldehydes, factor 13, dihomo bifunctional NHS esters, carbonyldemide, glyoxyls, proanthocyanidin, reuterin. This invention can be applied by using the bioplastic as tissue, cartilage, tendons, ligaments, bones, and being used in stem cell delivery. Campbell, Burgess, Weiss, Smith 2013. 2014, it is found in a study published in 2014 that bioplastics can be made from blending vegetable waste, parsley and spinach stems, the husks from cocoa, the hulls of rice, etc. with TFA solutions of pure cellulose creates a bioplastic. Bear, Guzman Puyol, Heredia Guerrero, Cesarichu, Pignatelli, Ruffili, Singalani, and Athanasiu 2014. 2016, an experiment finds that a car bumper that passes regulation can be made from nano-cellulose-based bioplastic biomaterials using banana peels, Hossein, Ibrahim, Elisa 2016 2017, a new proposal for bioplastics made from lignocellulosex resources dry plant matter, Broden, Malin, Vallejos, Opetal, Area, Chinga Carrasco 2017 2018, many developments occur including IKEA starting industrial production of bioplastics furniture Barrett 2018, project effective focusing on replacing nylon with bio-nylon Barrett 2018, and the first packaging made from fruit Barrett 2018. 
Asterisk not a comprehensive list, inventions pulled by the author to show versatility of bioplastics and important breakthroughs, new applications and inventions of bioplastics happen each year. Topic. Testing procedures Topic. Industrial compostability, N13432, ASTM D6400 The N13432 industrial standard is arguably the most international in scope. This standard must be met in order to claim that a plastic product is compostable in the European marketplace. In summary, it requires biodegradation of 90% of the materials in a lab within 90 days. The ASTM 6400 standard is the regulatory framework for the United States and sets a less stringent threshold of 60% biodegradation within 180 days for non-homopolymers, and 90% biodegradation of homopolymers within industrial composting conditions, temperatures at or above 140 F. Municipal compost facilities do not see above 130 F. Many starch based plastics, PLA based plastics, and certain aliphatic aromatic co polyester compounds, such as succinates and adipates, have obtained these certificates. Additive based bioplastics sold as photodegradable or oxobiodegradable do not comply with these standards in their current form. Topic. Compostability, ASTM D6002 The ASTM D6002 method for determining the compostability of a plastic defined the word compostable as follows that which is capable of undergoing biological decomposition in a compost site such that the material is not visually distinguishable and breaks down into carbon dioxide, water, inorganic compounds and biomass at a rate consistent with known compostable materials. This definition drew much criticism because, contrary to the way the word is traditionally defined, it completely divorces the process of composting from the necessity of it leading to humus, compost as the end product. The only criterion this standard does describe is that a compostable plastic must look to be going away as fast as something else one has already established to be compostable under the traditional definition. <laughs> Withdrawal of ASTM D6002 In January 2011, the ASTM withdrew standard ASTM D6002, which had provided plastic manufacturers with the legal credibility to label a plastic as compostable. Its description is as follows. This guide covered suggested criteria, procedures, and a general approach to establish the compostability of environmentally degradable plastics. The ASTM has yet to replace this standard. Topic: <inaudible> Biobased ASTM D6866. The ASTM D6866 method has been developed to certify the biologically derived content of bioplastics. Cosmic rays colliding with the atmosphere mean that some of the carbon is the radioactive isotope carbon-14. CO2 from the atmosphere is used by plants in photosynthesis, so new plant material will contain both carbon-14 and carbon-12. Under the right conditions, and over geological timescales, the remains of living organisms can be transformed into fossil fuels. After approximately 100,000 years all the carbon-14 present in the original organic material will have undergone radioactive decay leaving only carbon-12. A product made from biomass will have a relatively high level of carbon-14, while a product made from petrochemicals will have no carbon-14. 
The percentage of renewable carbon in a material solid or liquid can be measured with an accelerator mass spectrometer. There is an important difference between biodegradability and biobased content. A bioplastic such as high density polyethylene (HDPE) can be 100% biobased, i.e. contain 100% renewable carbon, yet be non-biodegradable. These bioplastics such as HDPE nonetheless play an important role in greenhouse gas abatement, particularly when they are combusted for energy production. The biobased component of these bioplastics is considered carbon neutral since their origin is from biomass. Anaerobic biodegradability, ASTM D551102 and ASTM D5526 The ASTM D5511-12 and ASTM D5526-12 are testing methods that comply with international standards such as the ISO DIS 15985 for the biodegradability of plastic. See also <laughs>